Hey guys, Luke here. Today we have a special episode, and as I promised, I will bring a special guest. And today we have a special guest here, so I don't want to introduce too much. So I will just make it short. Let's welcome Kyle Julius. Thanks, Luca. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm kind of nervous right now. This is my <laughs> first interview with a coach. Well, I hope I can help you out, and and I hope it works out. Yeah. And can you just introduce yourself a little bit? Uh, sure. For for the uh, basketball fans in Taiwan, probably know me as uh, the former uh, coach of the Dreamers for、yeah. the last、uh, three three and a half seasons, I guess you could say.、Um, I came to Taiwan after coaching in the ABL、um, in、uh, Vietnam and before that in Canada.、Uh, so I'm a Canadian、uh, former Canadian basketball player,、uh, Canadian coach, and and I've been now in Asia for almost six. Six seasons. I originally came to the Dreamers to to work in the ABL,、um, but then COVID, you know, kind of killed killed、yeah. the ABL, and and then luckily、uh, Blackie built the P League, and I was I was,、um, you know,、uh, at that time staying in Taiwan and working in Taiwan was really interesting.、Uh, I had started a relationship with a lot of the owners and players on the team, so it was really cool to kind of continue. And、uh, and now I'm here,、um, ready ready to go back to Canada, getting getting ready to go home with my family and start a new chapter coaching、uh, back in Canada. Yeah. Well, by the way, your resume is amazing. Like the past eight years, you work with、um, probably five teams, I believe, and you won a coach of a year、um, at、uh, 2016, right? Yeah, 2016-17 was a special season in Canada. We、yeah. we、uh, we won the championship. We had an incredible team, an incredible group of guys, and that was my third year coaching professionally.、Um, actually, my two years at, on that team, the London Lightning, we we had an incredible record and an incredible two seasons.、Uh, lots of really great、uh, players, Canadians and Americans, on that team, and、uh, yeah, from there. Came to Asia, and、uh, it's been hard in Asia for sure,、uh, adjusting to the different styles and the different rules of the leagues. Yeah, you and, mentioned it before. Yeah, very difficult, but、uh, great experience. I have I have、uh, nothing but gratitude for for the people that gave me the opportunity in in Asia, and the experience has definitely made me a better coach. It was definitely a challenge to adjust my system to.、Um, The ABL first, and then Taiwanese basketball and Taiwanese culture. But、uh, yeah, won, won a championship, won a few championships in the process, and、uh, leave, leave. I definitely leave the Dreamers with a winning record and and something,、uh, you know, a culture that we built that I'm definitely very proud of. Yeah. Is there any regret? <sighs> there's always regrets. You know, there's always things I wish I could have probably done differently.、Uh, definitely a few regrets. I can never lie about that. But I mean, coaching is tough.、Um, uh, finding a way as a foreign coach in a new country, especially in in Asia, where it's so different. You know,、yeah. I think Europe and Canada, Europe and North America, definitely similarities.、Yeah. Uh, but Asia, North America, very, very, very different. Di- very different. So I definitely made some mistakes.、Well. Definitely have some do-overs, but 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 overall, very proud. Well,、yeah. there there are some tough choices you have to make, right? Yeah, right. I think the, you know, and when you coach in North America, you have imports,、right. but because the locals, like the Canadians, are so good, you never really look at a player like an import. Like once you build your roster, you'll have like three Americans, but most of the time your Canadians are better or just as good. Your local、yeah. players, so you never pick an import like he has to carry the team. And I I always struggled with that in Asia because, because the, the difference is so big. It's so significant,、yeah. right? And the way I coach, my style and my system is what we call equal opportunity and equal accountability.、Uh, everyone's average. Everyone's supposed to be the same yeah,、right. or treated the same. And have the same expectations, but what I found quickly is it was easier in the ABL because you had more、uh, imports. Yeah.、Uh, but what I found in Taiwan that was so challenging was, as a coach, the games and your career and your job, your record, like really depend on these two players, like these these two imports. True. You true. know, and you try to make it so it doesn't happen. And I thought. Two years ago, we did a really good job of that, of really growing and using our local players.、Uh, not, Especially last year. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. But 
overall, it became something very difficult uh, for me because I don't like relying on only one or two players. And sometimes it's not fair yeah. to those as one a or Lion two years, As a Lion Years, I have to say it's true because last year, as we all know, Simbular is on yeah. our team. And like I know a lot of fans will hate me to say this. Hey, uh, Sam, it's kind of hurting our team in the long term. It's helping us in one season, but in long term, it's hurting our team. And it's kind of limit the locals to have a better game, I would say. Yeah, that. yeah. but that's the nature of the rules, yeah, right? Uh, that's the nature of how the league is built. Um, you can never fault a coach. You can never fault the Lioneers organization yeah, or true. coach for, for picking a player and saying, okay, we want to win right now. You can never fault them for doing that. That's their job. That's what they try and do. Um, they And they were very dependent on their imports, but their imports, uh, Are good. they fit, right? Yeah. And, and that, that kind of mentality worked. And, you know, you get to the finals and you can't really complain about an opportunity, you know, in, in the finals. Uh, for me, I got to the finals my first year in a much different way. I got to the finals my first year in the P League using all five players, using our locals as extremely important pieces. Achi, Amigo at the time, Doe at the time, using him as using them as very important pieces, playing small ball. Um, I think for me, what I'm the most proud of is the Dreamers were the first to do a lot of things in the P League. Yes, I have to admit we, that. We were the first to play small. We were the first to defensively switch everything. All switch. Right? Yeah, we were the first. And I was criticized for it a lot. Yeah. But then we're in the finals. And then you see the second year, everyone doing, doing it, doing yeah. the same thing, right? And so um, I was really proud of what we built, the culture that we built. I felt like we could have really done something special here. We had some really, really unlucky injuries. You know, yeah. our first year in the finals, we beat Fubon. We're up one nothing, and we lose Jaron Young to a sickness, and he has to go home. Yeah, right. And so we have to play the playoffs with one import because uh, Anthony Tucker left because he was having a baby. So we're in the finals with literally only one import. True. And we win the first game, and we go to overtime in uh, game three, if, if Jaron Young stays, that could have been a different series because people don't know this, but if you look at our record against Fubon that year with Jaron Young and Steph Hicks, we were winning 4-2. People, people didn't know that. Or sorry, 3-2. 3-2. People didn't really know that or talk about that, right? Um, because, you have, I mean, you have to give Fubon credit. They had a great year that year, and, and they really, you know, handled business. Then last year, you know, we're rolling towards the end of the season, and we lose, you know, Randy Walco and who is the heart and soul of our local you know production True. and we use we lose randy and that really hurt us but we still found a way to win games then we're in the finals excuse me we're in the playoffs and we lose steph jankovic who in my opinion was the best all-round uh Im import in the yeah. league he, obviously sim scored at the rim obviously mike singletary was a scorer but when you talk about an import that had size, that could guard multiple positions, that could play make and make shots and score, there was no one better than Steph Jankovic. And we're beating Fubon in game one by, I don't know, 25, and he blows out his knee. Yeah. And our whole season kind of died. And so I sit here, like you ask if I had regrets, definitely some things I would love to do over, but man, we had, a little, we had some bad luck and a few things could have gone the other way. It would be a whole different story for the Dreamers. But, I mean, that's that's basketball and that's that's pro sports. Yeah. I have to say, Jankovic is one of my favorite import because yeah. he can do, like, almost everything. I think he is literally, because the P-League has such unique rules, right? The fourth like quarter. The fourth quarter, yeah. only two imports, et cetera, et cetera. Steph is an extremely talented uh, all-round player, but he's got confidence He's got toughness. He's got incredible leadership skills. He comes early to the gym. He stays late. He works on his game. He's a special import. Yeah, I have to admit that. I like him. We, we really lost a lot uh, when he got hurt and then weren't able to bring him back this year. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, let's move on. Sure. So uh, upcoming question is going to be a little bit tough, a okay. little bit sharp, because fans are lion ears. So I have yep. to ask those questions. Sure. So, uh, what do you think is the biggest change between these two seasons for Dreamers? Because the shooting split is getting lower, especially yeah. the three-point line. Uh, last year, shooting 31%, yeah. and this year, only shooting 28%. Three, three players. 
three players. Okay, so last year when we had a lot of success and we were at the top of the league, we were in first for a long time. We had Randy Walco playing at a high level. We had Doug Creighton playing at a high level. And we had Kenny shooting the ball at a high level, right? All three of those guys were essentially non-existent this season. Oh, Kenny? Kenny was there, but his shooting was completely different, right? The shooting form, right? The shooting. So when you talk about the shooting, you said you mentioned the shooting splits. So if you take Randy, he was like 14 points a game, I believe, uh, 12 to 14 points a game at like 38% from three. Doug Creighton, 10 to 11 points a game at a high percentage. Okay, so, so you're talking 25 points right there at a good percentage. And then you add Kenny around the same, another 10 to 12, but a good shooting percentage last year, leading the league at some times at 40%. You're talking 35 points, but not only 35 points, but my style, my system, my spacing, my balance, my flow, my tempo, all that gone this year. Right. No Randy. Doug only played a few games because he was hurt. And Kenny's, um, Kenny's one of my favorite players I've ever coached. Kenny's fantastic, but he wasn't shooting the ball the same. So to ask, to, to really give you the difference between this season and the season before, it's that. It's about 40 points a game on high percentages that we did not bring over from that year to this year. And that changed everything because I'm a five-out coach. I'm yes. a spacing coach. We love to shoot the three and play with tempo and space. So all of a sudden, the group that um, executed my system really well the year before has changed dramatically this year. And then we brought in bigger players, like bigger local players, and they're good. I, I mean, I have a lot of respect for Derek and Jerry and, and, and Manimal, like the new players that we brought in. But it's hard for me to use those types of players in a five-out system when they're not really five-out guys, right? And so the two, the two challenges were okay we lose all this shooting and then figuring out how to use these bigger players uh, that aren't really my style that was definitely um, definitely the big change between the two years for sure you kind of answer my next question because some dreamers fans sent me a question mm -hmm. about rotation yeah why uh, this year you brought in uh, Ryan which is a yep. new player yep. and also Jerry is a new player yep. why didn't get why didn't they get minutes well, Ryan did. I started Ryan. Ryan played big minutes for me. But like the, the start of the season, he's kind of struggled, right? Yeah, the start of the season, the first couple games. I mean, for, for one thing, a new player with a new coach, it takes time. You have to learn. Um, I think what I've found is a lot of the Taiwanese local players are really not used to my system. They, I, I really encourage shooting the ball with spacing. Uh, I really encourage tempo. And we have an offensive system that we kind of call five seconds or less. So we want to get to our spots in five seconds or less. And then we want to take the first best shot. That's kind of my system. But doesn't really equate to the way the, a lot of the Taiwanese players were raised, especially players that have played a long time in the SBL. I think um, the Taiwanese game, the Taiwanese coach is extremely traditional, um, extremely big man oriented, um, very, very different. Like if you look at the way Achi played for me, it took me a long time to get Achi going. If you look back at that first year, I was really hard on Achi. But once he really understand it, what I want, what I wanted, he had 30 point games, like monster games. He 39 points against Tao Yin, 32 against uh, Shinsu in a huge, in a huge game. Like it's that first season, right? Yeah. And it took a long time to get him going. I think Ryan and Jerry, there just wasn't enough connection uh, between the two of us, like the three of us, like between the player and the coach. I just, I, I, I take responsibility. I probably did a bad job connecting with them and probably not a good job really teaching my system to them because I don't really think they ended up really grasping, you know, my system and how I wanted them to play. I think it was so different for them. So to answer the fans question, I did play Ryan a lot. Uh, after the first couple games, he started a lot. Uh, we got him a lot of shots, a lot of open shots. We, we used Ryan significantly. Jerry, for me, I think just a difference in style, uh, difference. Uh, I played Derek more than Jerry, probably because my relationship with Derek was a little bit stronger and just better. Uh, I think Jerry's a really good player. Um, but I really always made my decisions based on what I was comfortable with in practice 
Uh, and again, I think I have to take responsibility. I probably just did not do a good job of really teaching uh, Jerry my system and what I really wanted. Because the uh, language barrier? Or... Yeah, language barrier is really hard. For me, I talk a lot. I speak quickly. I have a lot of like very precise terminology for my system that I've developed over the years. And yeah, I, I really felt like the language barrier was really a problem for me this season. Yeah. Right. So players go to learn English. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you also mentioned Luca, uh, which is RG. RG, yeah. Uh, he's actually one of my players, not just because the similarity of the names, but the way he played the game, the way he changed the game. Yeah. But there's one thing that I always wondering, why he's not a starter. He's not a starter. He's always a six man. Yeah. So uh, in the years past, we would start him on and off. But I think for me, again, my style and what I like, it's very important in my system and my style to have uh, scoring off the bench. It's very important that those subs that you make, um, your first couple subs, you can either maintain or you can get better. So for me, um, I enjoyed bringing Achi off the bench. I thought that it uh, allowed him to come in when the game, uh, it allowed him to come in and spark the game. It allowed him to come in and spark us. Um, but at the same time, I did start him a lot. This year with the new players that came, uh, I felt like it was important to give those new, some of those new players start, some of the new players give some of the new players a little bit more playing time. But more, more importantly, Achi, when we lose, you know, especially when we don't have Doug, Right, we always brought Doug off the bench for great scoring off right. the bench. Right, we didn't have Doug. Uh, Randy sometimes would start, sometimes would come off the bench. In the years previous, we didn't have that anymore. So I think for me, I have a trust. I had a trust in Achi's ability to maintain our tempo and score off the bench. So for me, it was just always bringing him off the bench to help our scoring, help our substitutions. Right. Okay. Um, let's talk about another player that you just mentioned, Derek. Uh. The first year, he is all defensive first team, right? And this year, he's kind of like, I won't say fell off, but it's just different. Yeah. Why? Well, I think Brandon Gilbeck. I think Gilbeck changed the situation, okay? So the first year, we had Derek as the only five, really. We had the Derek. The only center, right? The only center, and then Tank was his backup. Like, that was the first year because we played small, right? We played Jaron and Steph Hicks and Anthony Tucker. Right. The second year, we bring in Brandon Gilbeck because the league was getting too big, right? It was getting too big to use Derek as your main five. I mean, the Lioneers had Sim, uh, you know, even the Kings had uh, Thomas Welsh and some bigger players. So we knew that it was important. Also, I think Brandon Gilbeck played for me in Canada, and we were really fascinated by his ability to start the fast break with a block shot. And... Uh, we want to play with tempo and we want to play our five second or less system. And we also want to try and find a way to make the game easier for the local players. Right. Uh, and so transition is always going to be your highest percentage shots. And so we felt like uh, Brandon's ability to block shots, start the fast break, help us defensively um, was really important. But that then that then meant the way Derek would play less. Right. Because it's hard to play uh, Derek and Brandon together, right? So you want a higher pace or? We wanted not necessarily higher pace, more pace. More pace. More pace, more consistent pace, right? We, if you watch us play over the last couple of years, as far as getting the ball out of the basket and up the floor, we probably play with the most consistent pace. I'd say the next best team was Fubon. They really run, they send a player out. They leak, we in English, we say they leak a guy out and then they, they throw it to them. And they're good at that. Um, but with Brandon, we felt like the block shots, the altering shots, the defensive capability would get us a few more possessions and hopefully spark a few more transition posi transitional possessions. So then, but then that meant Derek was going to be Brandon's backup. Yeah. And, and so to be perfectly honest, it has not much to do with Derek playing better or playing worse. We just used him less, uh, primarily because of, of Brandon. So it's a pretty simple answer in, in a long way. Okay, so um, yesterday I just met a Dreamers fan. Yep. And he asked me a question. Mm -hmm. A little bit tough. Yep. Will you bring back Brandon? To Canada. 
to Canada? Well, even if we do, it doesn't affect the Dreamers season, right? Brandon's played two years now in Canada and played for the Dreamers the whole time. So yeah, I'm in the process of building that roster. Um, we love Brandon. I know Brandon loves playing in Canada, but you know, it's really important to me that the Dreamers have a successful season this year because that was part of the reason why I wanted to leave. I wasn't doing a good job with these guys this year. There wasn't the same connection. I wanted to step away so that they had a better chance to have success. We want Brandon to have great success. Uh, the, the owners and the, the, the teammates and the players in Canada want Brandon to have great success here. I want Brandon to have great success. So for, for us in Canada, we won't even mention Canada or talk to Brandon uh, until he's done you know, with the Dreamers here. He's always welcome to play for us, of course, in Canada. He's been very successful. Um, but I want the Dreamers to be successful this year. I really do. And I really want Brandon to be a big part of that. So we'll just leave him alone. The Dreamers fans have nothing to worry about with Brandon because the seasons don't overlap. Yeah, true. And Brandon actually improved a lot this season, right? Yeah, uh, it's hard to say this season. Like, I think he's just improved a lot in general. If you look at last season, when we were really successful towards the end of the year, he was playing great. He caught a bad knee injury. He, got, he banged knees really bad in one game, and we missed him for five or six games, and then he got COVID, and that really hurt us. But the way he started playing for me at the start of the year when we had our, our wins this year, he was outstanding. And he's – Brandon is so young. Brandon is – he's only 25. Like, Brandon has a world of potential ahead of him. Yeah. Offensively, this year he had low post and he got mid range a little bit. A little bit, right? of, little bit of face up mid range yeah. that he's been working on. He can shoot the three. We allow him to shoot the three in practice a lot. Um, he just has to build the confidence to kind of do it in the game. But we we let him shoot threes every drill. We make sure he's shooting the threes. Uh, some of my coaches were questioning me the last couple of years. Why is Brandon shooting threes in practice? Right? And well, because five out. Well, yeah, five out for sure. But no, I mean. Sometimes, you know, when it comes to practice in season, you don't want guys to do things that they're not going to do in games, right? You want them to be expert, at, you know, master what they're going to do in the games. But for me, also with younger players like Brandon, a part of it is development and a part of it is building confidence. And so we always let him shoot threes. So he has that. He has the ability to shoot threes. He'll, he'll make threes in practice all the time. So he's got a, he's got a, like I said, he's got a lot of potential. He's got a lot of opportunity ahead of him. And his offensive game, when he is playing confidently, his offensive game is really good. Yeah, especially in transition. Transition is probably the best, uh, I would say the best center, best five in, in plus league. Yeah, when he runs, he's elite. Yeah. Like you, like seven footer running, ceiling running, getting you know, old boards running, and finishing dribble. the break, pushing the ball a little bit. He's he's special. Yeah, he's special. special. Yeah. 好啦，第一集的部分就到这边告一个段落。那也请各位敬请期待第二集。呃、哦，我相信各位会觉得说，荧幕画面会有点雾雾的，然后声音 ，Kyle Julius 教练的声音比较大声，我的声音比较小声。那这边跟各位道个歉。呃，一方面是我的相机设定没有设定好，光线真的是不在一个呃 ，not in the very good conditions， 所以我没有办法调整的那么好，因为那个也是临时借的场地，所以不好意思各位，下次我会再做改进的。那声音的部分的话是单纯没办法，因为我的线材少了，然后电容式麦克风跟电圈式麦克风的声音没办法做。呃，分别的调整，所以导致 Kyle Julius 教练的声音比较大声，我的声音比较小声。那我之后会再改进的。话说，也请各位帮我按赞加订阅了。那最近呢，我也开了欧付宝的支付的账号。那如果呃各位粉丝有一点点闲钱的话，也不妨投个十几块钱给我。那我的练财链接在下面，所以啊，当然啦，不是必要，但是如果有的话，也是非常好的，<笑>不然我这个都没有开盈利。拜托各位，如果各位想要看到更多我采访教练或者是球员的影片的话，拜托让我知道，或者是投一些小钱让我知道。那我们今就先这样子，下一集再见喽，拜拜。